Is Roger Olson's new book a polemic? Is he picking a fight? Or is it more thoughtful? What's he actually talking about when he's taking on liberal theology? Well, let me tell you what I thought. Welcome to Books and Big Ideas, what I'm reading, what I'm thinking about, with Joel Wentz. All right, I have here uh, the new title from Zondervan and Roger Olson, Against Liberal Theology. The subtitle is Putting the Brakes on Progressive Christianity. So I want to take you through uh, what I thought in my normal format of the main idea, the research, readability, and the reasonableness. So I was not previously very familiar with Roger Olson. I had heard of his book, The Mosaic of Belief, and heard it was well regarded, but I had never written it, uh, read anything by him previously. This book caught uh, my attention because of some um, positive reviews it had received, and so I grabbed it. And the main idea here is, I mean, it's pretty succinctly stated in the title and subtitle, um, but he really is um, responding to specifically, and this is important, he's responding specifically to liberal Protestantism, particularly in America, as of 2022. He's responding to a certain brand of kind of liberal theology within especially mainline Christian practice in America. Um, and so the main idea is, A, he's trying to define, and this is to tip my hand in my opinion a little bit, um, I, took, I really appreciated how he took great care to define what exactly liberal theology is that he is responding to. So he does a lot of definition work. Um, to define what exactly is this liberal theology kind of stream, and then he responds to it in his own, uh, what he finds lacking or wanting about it. Um, and uh, and a, ma a major refrain of the book is his contention that liberal, th liberal Protestant theology is cutting, cutting the cord of continuity. He uses that phrase a lot. It's cutting the cord of continuity between um, what it believes and actual tr traditional historic Orthodox Christianity. Um, and therefore, his contention is that it should call itself something other than Christianity. Um, it's cutting the cord of continuity to such a degree that it really should have a different name other than Christianity. That's, that's his main contention. And he states that pretty much directly in the opening pages and then unpacks it uh, through the rest of the chapters. So, um, so that's the main idea. Uh, the research behind it, he is uh, very well read in the particular stream of... Christianity, Christian theology, he is engaging with. With one exception, he does not engage almost at all with, I'm going to say more about this maybe at the end, he does not engage almost at all with feminist the, feminist liberal theology. Um, there's very little of that in, in here. Um, someone like Catherine Tanner, for example, is not does not show up at all. Uh, so that, I, I wish there was a little bit more engagement there in terms of the research and the, and the sourcing. However, however, he is very well, very, very well um, versed in what is now classic mainline liberal Protestantism. People like Adolf Van Harnack, uh, people mo more modern people like John Shelby Spong. Um, he he quotes uh, even and he even roots things back in Schleiermacher. He's very well read in Schleiermacher. He 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 roots kind of the whole project in Schleiermacher specifically and more at depth actually probably back to Hegel. Um, and that whole coming out of kind of German German theology in the modernist kind of era um, into how it trickled in through uh, American Protestantism and kind of flowered in certain, um, you know, 20th century thought. Um, that whole stream, he's ex he, uh, particularly a male writers, which, which historic, to be historically honest, they were almost all men, at least in that time frame. Um, he does a really good job at interacting with all of them. He quotes them really well. I think he does a fair representation of their beliefs. I think he does that very well. Uh, and so in that limited scope of kind of that mainline modernist American Protestant liberalism, very well read with that one exception of kind of no attention to feminist theology. Um, so that's, that's the research. I mean, he, he's an academic. He's a professor at Baylor, I believe. And so, uh, so he... He did his academic lifting for that. Now, the readability. I read this book in one sitting. Uh, and I'm, I'm a fast reader, but even that is uh, a little unusual for me. And it's because the style is very, very approachable. Very, very approachable. So um, it's also short. Um, if you can see when I held it up, it's not a super long book. 
um, it's 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 somewhere between a like it's definitely not a monograph, but it's also more than like a pamphlet <laughs> or a booklet. It's somewhere in the middle there. Um, and he is trying to make a very pointed case. It's very clear. It's very it's very very lucid and clear, um, and very approachably written. Uh, it is a little bit repetitive stylistically. I found some of the repetition a little like he references this particular debate between um, two theologians, Clark Pinnock and, and uh, Delwyn Brown. Um, and he, re- re- he refers to that so many times where the book was kind of like, okay, yeah, we remember, <laughs> you know, as a reader, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember the book. You don't need to keep explaining this particular debate. Um, anyways, that's a little bit of a nitpick. Stylistically, it's super easy to read. I, I took in the whole argument in one sitting, like I said. Um, I think that even if you're not a fast reader, you would get through this pretty quickly. Um, so very readable with some quibbles there on some of the style. Uh, and then finally, the reasonableness. Well, I already leveled one critique against it in the research. Um, I do wish he engaged with a little bit more of m- more fully in the stream of liberal theology, liberal theological thought, particularly feminist. Um, and I kind of do wish he had gotten outside of the kind of the, the white mainline uh, a little bit more. But I, I even I hedge a little bit even in that critique because he really, in order for his argument to be crystal clear and pointed as it is, he really is trying to take on a very specific stream of theology. So I could see where it could potentially muddy the waters a little bit to, to comment too widely. Certainly the book would not have been able to be as short as it is. But I still wish he would have engaged, particularly the, the, um, the feminist side of, of things. Um, or at least more women, uh, liberal, more women who are liberal Protestants. That being said, that being said, I want to say a couple things. I want to emphasize a couple things really clearly here and my opinion of this book. Um, I think he does a, an extraordinarily commendable job at being ironic in his tone. And he, do, he goes to great pains, great pains to be very clear in trying to say that he is not personally. And, I, and it comes off the page well. He's not, you know, he's not fisticuffs. He's not angry. He's not raging. <laughs> he's just trying to be very clear in his in his sense that I'm, he is trying to say, I'm trying to really pin down what these theologians actually really believe and trying to pin down with clarity whether or not it can be fairly called a Christian anymore. I mean, that's like the driving question of the whole book. And I really appreciated that tone and I appreciated the singular relentless focus on that question. I appreciated that he great, takes great pains to say that he's not judging the souls <laughs> or not leveling any sort of condemnation or judgment on any individuals. Um, and he's not making any judgment on whether or not, alt, in, a, in a cosmic sense, they are saved or accepted by God. Or he's not, he's not wading into any of that territory. He's merely trying to make a very clear case about the things that they write and the things that they say, whether or not those things can be, with fairness and accuracy, categorized as Christian. And whether it's even... And I, and I, I largely found his case compelling... To, which is to say that it probably isn't fair to their thought systems or to historic Orthodox Christianity to call both these things Christianity at this point. And I want to say one more thing uh, without getting too far into the weeds to keep this video short. Um, I also appreciated where he did not go. So the reader might be, or if you're watching this video, you might be interested in certain specific theological or doctrinal or ethical arguments. He doesn't get into things like sexual ethics, definitions of marriage. He doesn't, he doesn't even really get into universalism or doctrine of hell. He doesn't, he doesn't get into those kind of, I don't know, debates, polemics that wage between liberal and conservative Christians. He stays pretty zoomed out and he talks about big ideas like what's the status of scripture? What is kind of the status of Christ and the Trinity and these big, more creedal affirmations of historic Christianity? What are, what are those historic affirmations of Christianity and what, do, what does this stream of theology have to say about them and can those things be squared and can they be said to be in the same tradition? So he stays really at kind of high level thinking, zoomed out issues about theology uh, and historical thought and not getting into the weeds on some of those cultural issues or, um, or debates uh, within different Christian uh, kind of denominations today. So... Um, I really appreciated that about the book as well. And I largely found his overall contention, just to repeat the point, his overall contention that if it's true, if it's true that progressive mainline liberal Protestantism doesn't really hold any any sort of divinely sourced status of scripture, 
It doesn't hold to pre-existence of Christ or the divinity of Christ in any meaningful way. And it does not hold to the Trinity. And it doesn't hold to any really clear eschatology in what was going to happen in the future. Um, And it doesn't even really hold to an historic doctrine of God and creation ex, ex nihilo. Uh, and some of these really high-level beliefs about the metaphysics of God, if it really doesn't hold to, like, any of that stuff, let alone all the other cultural stuff I just mentioned, if it doesn't hold to any of that stuff, can it really, like, in intellectual honesty, call it Christian anymore? I have to agree with him. At the end of the day, I don't think it's really fair to call it Christian. Uh, And without throwing shade on people who believe that, I just think it's for the sake of clarity and for the sake of better discussions, it's good to have clear labels for these thought systems. What is Christian, what is not, is ultimately what's at stake here in terms of what we say, what we believe, what we write, what we put out in the world and the the system that we uh, adhere to and are loyal to. And so I really appreciated his argument. I really appreciated the ways he stayed out of certain things, and I appreciated the ways he stayed relentlessly focused around his core questions. And I really appreciated the depth of the research. Even if it was a narrow stream, he would brought a real depth of research and understanding to the people he was responding to. So, if any of that sounds of interest to you, and it's a, it's a very readable package, if, it's, if you know Roger Olson or if you're interested in this debate, this topic, and if you're unsure of what to do with kind of mainline liberal Protestantism, um, this probably is a really helpful, going to be a helpful book for you. So I would definitely recommend it. Um, but if you're looking for ammunition in some of these debates on some of those other issues I alluded to, especially as it relates to cultural and political issues, it's not going to be here, and that's for the best. I would probably still recommend the book for you, actually, in that case. Um, but there you go. That's my, those are my thoughts on Roger Olson's new book, Against Liberal Theology, Putting the Brakes on Progressive Christianity. As always, I hope you found something intellectually interesting, stimulating, thoughtful here, uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch.